Christopher Walken, one, the first time I ever did a casting session in America, yeah. terrified me. Me too. I mean, I, I, you know, I came I, to meet the guy. They said, oh, he's flying, he's flying in. It's no secret that Hollywood is as mysterious as a magician's hat, from the glitzy parties to the occasional scandals, and those pesky attempts to keep certain movies under wraps. And let's not forget about the subtle art of artist management. It's like Hollywood's version of herding cattle. A Hollywood trainer was talking to me to force me to go and like apologize, right? Moreover, it's no hush-hush matter that celebrities occasionally indulge in a bit of harmless banter about their fellow actors. Take the legendary Mel Gibson at the ever-iconic Christopher Walken, for instance. No doubt that Christopher Walken has been an absolute force of nature in Hollywood, dazzling audiences with his unique style and versatility. From quirky quirks to a vast array of authentic character portrayals spanning various movie genres, he's been an entertainment powerhouse. His indomitable presence on both the silver screen and TV screens has left an unforgettable mark on fans' hearts. Be a free ride. You do it again. Show this boy. Go ahead. No, I. That's terrific, kid. That's terrific. <laughs> With a voice that could command a room, a face that could launch a thousand ships, and an expression so serious it could turn milk sour, Christopher Walken had that spooky presence that made Hollywood sit up and take notice. But what really set him apart were the spine-tingling roles he took on. Walken specialized in playing characters that were so intense they'd send shivers down your spine faster than a roller coaster. You're a terrific actor, and you've you've portrayed many types of people, but you clearly you you like to play an evil character, don't you? Well, sure, I like to work. It's no surprise that when fellow celebrities watched him regularly don the cloak of such serious and scary roles, they couldn't help but associate him with those characters. Some might say that people were more scared of walking off screen than on, just like the case with Denis Villeneuve. Once, Patrice Vermet, the production designer of Dune 2, also stated in an interview that the Deer Hunter actor's casting as the film's villain was an easy choice, calling it a no-brainer because of the general image he possessed in the industry. He said, Speaking of villains, the movie will finally introduce the potty Shah Emperor Shaddam IV in the flesh, and Villeneuve made it clear that casting Christopher Walken in the role was a no-brainer because there's something about that man that commands respect. Walken's bone-chilling aura even managed to give the charismatic Mel Gibson a serious case of the heebie-jeebies during their first encounter. This peculiar meeting from the annals of Hollywood history resurfaced in a vintage 1998 interview where Mel Gibson spilled the beans on his rather unsettling take on the movie industry. The interview went viral, setting the online community abuzz with with wild conspiracy theories in the wake of Gibson's comments. He acknowledged, quote, I thought, oh no, Chris Walken is the Antichrist, you know. Gibson's comment about Walken was not right because, despite his looks and eerie aura, he is a legendary actor who has contributed to Hollywood with his captivating performances. Well, it appears that those who dared to speak about the legendary actor might have felt the icy winds of disapproval from some of Hollywood's elite. Recently, Mel Gibson has been toiling away on rather controversial movies, and the latest buzz is quite the showstopper. Word on the street is that the film that he's working on has achieved a jaw-dropping milestone, breaking the $150 million barrier at the box office, and its meteoric rise seems far from running out of steam. They don't have a lot of 3D special effects, but, um, but they do operate on a higher level. Despite changing landscapes and atmospheres of Hollywood, this film has not only recouped its production costs but has managed to bankroll a whopping tenfold return. It's now etching its name in the halls of box office history as one of the most astonishing triumphs of all time. If I put down exactly what happened, it's too, it's too hard to take. <laughs> no, there have been a lot of uh, obstacles thrown in the way. <laughs> Rumors have it that Gibson is getting ready to drop another four-part documentary series that will peel back the layers of the clandestine world of global heinous crimes. According to the folks over at Newsweek, this jaw-dropping revelation is poised to shine a spotlight on the industry's mind-boggling annual revenue of a whopping $34 billion, a figure so astronomical it's hard to wrap your head around, and it even surpasses the yearly earnings of the airline industry. And I understand that it's the other realm warring. Mm -hmm. um, I, I believe that that's a very real thing, and I've taken steps wherever I can to sort of like um, uh, put on some armor. Here is Tim Ballantyne from Operation Underground, who is reportedly the main character in Gibson's movie. He's a leading figure in the global fight against human E, and spoke about Gibson's involvement in the project. He said he supports a bunch of orphans in Ukraine, and he was worried about them, and he asked if I could 
help get him out. So now I've got 12 from my wife, I got 13 others from Mel Gibson. This movie is apparently the true story of Tim. The story behind this controversial movie reveals that Tim Ballard, who had previously served with the CIA and later joined the newly formed Department of Homeland Security, spent several years targeting consumers of CIA material. However, despite his efforts, he was unable to rescue the children being E. According to Tim, quote, I had spent 12 years as a special agent, undercover operator for the Department of Homeland Security working child crimes, CT, and it was kind of an evolution. The first few years, it was mostly just end user, collector, cases of people who are possessing, distributing material, and always wondering where are the kids. I see the videos. It breaks my heart. I gotta describe them. There's a scene in the movie that breaks my heart where Jim is crying, as he's having to describe these horrific scenes of children. And when I say children, I mean average age 7. Six, five. According to Angel Studios, which holds the licensing rights to this movie, the purpose of the film is to put a spotlight on the global movement to end the trafficking of minors by successfully distributing this film to a worldwide audience. It's absolutely mind-boggling how Hollywood is seemingly going all out to give this movie the cold shoulder. The movie has seemingly reignited the spotlight on Hollywood and it's raising eyebrows all around. One notable figure finding themselves under the magnifying glass is none other than Oprah Winfrey. You might remember her lavish 40 million dollar contribution to the Oprah Winfrey Leadership Academy for Girls in South Africa, a school that comes equipped with some rather luxurious extras, including a yoga studio and a beauty salon. Oprah Winfrey has given a whopping $400 million to education. In a startling turn of events, whispers began to circulate that mere months after the school's grand opening, the dorm matron faced arrest on charges of S.A. against several 7th and 8th graders. Oprah, it said, distanced herself from the situation and there were murmurs of her pointing fingers at the school administration, alleging a cover-up and pledging to pursue justice to the fullest. These revelations have cast an unforgiving spotlight on the murkier aspects of philanthropic endeavors and have ignited concerns about how the industry deals with such grave issues. She said, I wanted to hire an independent team because my experience with child predators is that no one ever, ever abuses just one child. The accused, tiny Virginia Macopo, was cleared of all 14 charges against her after a magistrate ruled that the case was unproven and the pupil's testimonies lacked corroboration. Macopo finally maintains her innocence and claims that she was wrongfully ensnared in this conspiracy. The incident has raised questions about the reliability of the allegations and the need for a fair and comprehensive investigation. According to her, quote, I do not know what steps I am going to take right now, but life for me for the past three years was nothing but hell, she told the Times of South Africa today. I have been struggling. This case has left me humiliated, broke, and unemployed. The nine alleged victims were aged between 13 and 15 when they made their claims against Makopo, who was also accused of assaulting one of the teenagers as well as a fellow supervisor. Winfrey had called the allegations crushing, especially because of her own stated history of CSA and promised an overhaul of the school. She made her unhappiness with the verdict clear. In recent months, a series of revelations has shown a glaring light on various facets of Hollywood, from the behavior of the industry's elite to the E of individuals, as notably highlighted in Mel Gibson's controversial film. In Hollywood, child stars have also been victim of CM by some executives. Lately, Corey Feldman has been quite outspoken about the ways in which Hollywood can exploit young talents, often with the help of their handlers. I'm saying that there are people that were the people that did this to both me and Corey yeah. that are still working, they're still out there, and there's some of the richest, most powerful people in this business. And Corey Feldman's foray into the world of acting commenced when he was a mere three years old. At such a tender age, a child lacks the capacity to give informed consent or grasps the full ramifications of stepping into the entertainment arena. This responsibility often rests on the shoulders of parents, who must make these decisions. In Corey's case, it's evident that his mother recognized the potential financial rewards linked to her child's career. This early initiation into the industry would go on to mold Corey's life and profound and lasting ways, as he would ultimately confront the various hurdles and shadowy facets that Hollywood can present. Because my mom was doing it with somebody on the set of The Lost Boys. Okay. This little, hot little Asian woman, who I was sitting there one night because I was like, falling asleep and I was depressed because I'm like In 2013, Corey Feldman demonstrated immense courage by publishing a memoir where he openly chronicled the maltreatment that he and his co-star Corey Haim had endured at the hands of influential figures within Hollywood. Astonishingly, Feldman revealed that these A took place when they were merely 11 to 13 years old, shedding light on the dark shadows that can loom over young actors in the entertainment industry. I was like, uh, okay, 
uh, I wouldn't really know where to get it. She's like, oh, I have it. Just come to my apartment. We'll do something. It'll be easy, and then you'll be fine. Feldman's disclosures about the A&E he endured throughout his career, notably during his formative years, extended beyond his time in Hollywood. He bravely articulated that his battles with Substance A in his later life were, at least in part, a direct consequence of the trauma he had faced during those challenging early years. His story underscores the lasting impact that such experiences can have on individuals. We did it. We had fun. It was like, you know, we were talking. Right. We are sitting in this girl's apartment. She takes me out driving. She taught me how to drive a stick shift high on cocaine. Feldman's courageous choice to come forward and potentially reveal the identities of those who harmed him have sent shockwaves throughout the entertainment industry, which has long grappled with allegations of mistreatment, particularly involving child actors. The experience of Brooke Shields is yet another example of a young actor who faced daunting challenges and E in the industry from an early age. Feldman's willingness to shine a light on these issues has ignited essential conversations and may well lead to significant changes in how the entertainment industry addresses and safeguards against a abuse and mistreatment, particularly among its youngest and most vulnerable members. You freeze. You're, you're in shock. I mean, children aren't supposed to handle that sort of stuff. Corey has been revealing alleged dark activities within Hollywood from the outset. However, as it became apparent that he was becoming increasingly outspoken, certain individuals within the industry began to suppress his voice, preventing him from further disclosure. One of those individuals was Barbara Walters. Roses and you're sunglasses damaging an entire industry. No, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm clear not up. trying you said to. That I'm just trying to say that it's a very important, serious topic. Barbara Walters, renowned for her probing interviews, might have pushed the boundaries in a recently unearthed video clip from an October 2013 episode of The View. During the segment, the seasoned media personality delved into the sensitive topic of Corey Feldman's past experiences. Feldman had appeared on the show to discuss his memoir choreography. And they, are and they do not want me saying what I'm saying right now. Are, are you saying that they're Yes. And that yes. they're still in this business? Yes. He further went on saying, they would throw these parties where you'd walk in and it would be mostly kids and there would be a handful of adult men. They would also be at the film awards and children's charity functions. Many observers remarked that Barbara Walters appeared to prioritize Hollywood's reputation over Corey Feldman's allegations of childhood SA during her interview with him. Roses and You're sunglasses are an entire industry. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not trying to. I'm just trying to say that it's a very important, serious topic. Furthermore, Leonardo DiCaprio DiCaprio has also found himself under the spotlight for his romantic entanglements with partners significantly younger than him. It seems that he currently leans towards relationship with individuals who are younger rather than seeking companionship with women of his own age or older. But I also find it slightly cringy, DiCaprio, that it's all, the women are always very young. It's like, well, really, yeah, mate? Is that your own age? Or so what do they talk about? However, numerous individuals have pondered the reasons behind Caprio's frequent association with dating younger women and the perception of him as a predator. Intriguingly, some sources indicate that his preference for younger partners might be rooted in his own past experiences, where he allegedly found himself the target of older individuals when he was younger. I find DiCaprio creepy, actually. Yeah. I, 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 going, out with, going out with people, you know, pff, easily young enough to be his, uh, you know, his daughter, or in some cases, probably his granddaughter. <laughs> it's a fact that Leonardo initiated his career as a child actor, dipping his toes into the world of commercials at a tender age. However, it's vital to acknowledge the challenges that young performers often face in the unforgiving landscape of Hollywood. The entertainment industry can be an incredibly daunting place for aspiring talents, especially for individuals like Leonardo, who didn't come from privileged backgrounds and were resolute in their pursuit of fame and success in Tinseltown. Addicts in my alleyway. There was, uh, you know, I I, I got uh, sort of uh, robbed at five years old or something like that. Five years old. Yeah. Although there's no official confirmation, there has been speculation that Leonardo DiCaprio could have been one of Brian Peck's victims. Leonardo and Brian collaborated on several occasions when Leonardo was younger. As many are aware, Brian Peck was exposed and convicted of S.A., a young actor who he was coaching at his home. Back then, this issue wasn't publicized and the actor's identity was never disclosed, being referred to as John Doe. In line with standard practice in such cases, however, Gabe Hoffman, executive producer of an explosive documentary, once said, Quote, there's an iceberg of child essay in Hollywood and you're starting to see it come to the surface. As we observe the situation, it's important to note that there has been no official confirmation regarding whether Leonardo DiCaprio was the young actor who experienced A by Brian Peck, or if he was indeed a victim. Moreover, some people also believe that these children and artists are controlled by Hollywood and this concept was also supported by Kanye West. Kanye believes that Hollywood has control over certain individuals and these people fear that their loved ones might be sacrificed by the industry. He even mentioned his 
own mother's passing in 2007, suggesting she was sacrificed, similar to the late father of Michael Jordan and the deceased sons of Bill Cosby and Dr. Dre. Bill Cosby, his son, right? Dr. Dre, his son. You know, out in Hollywood, a lot of people come up missing. According to Kanye, the motive behind Hollywood's actions is all about control. He believes that the industry's elites not only manipulate people, but also subject them to mental torture. In order to control, traumatize, they want to monetize and traumatize. And God loved me. You understand? He went even further by exposing some of the biggest names in the industry who he claims are influenced by satanic powers. One of the names was Minister Louis Farrakhan who defended Kanye in a video posted on a website. Despite the defense, Kanye took his name into the mix, adding to the alarm and intrigue surrounding these disclosures. For Minister Farrakhan, I love you, but the way you read that, I took that as a slight, you know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't take no disrespect from nobody, so let's get on the phone, let's talk that out. Indeed, Kanye is not the only one who holds such beliefs. Kanye firmly stands by his ideas on the matter and he doesn't hold back. Before making these comments, he made it clear that he's not afraid to criticize any of Hollywood's wrongdoers or elites. Kanye's ideas have sparked curiosity and concern as he raises questions about the workings of Hollywood and its alleged practices. One person commented, Yay, please be careful. They hate people who love the Lord and speak the truth. They took my kids from me until I fought for a straight year. Video and audio document every encounter, no matter how small. That will be the only reason that and God himself, who is backing that, will bring them babies home to you. We hear you. I know you're telling the truth. Keep speaking it. They will eventually expose their self. There are sources that suggest Hollywood Hollywood's elites will go to great extremes to maintain control over artists. Jamie Foxx, in particular, has been vocal about this issue. He revealed the existence of strange and obscene parties hosted by the elites, shedding light on their alleged tactics to exert influence and control. And it's a pool party that is ridiculous. And I look up and I see Dr. Ruth. I don't know if you know who that is. <laughs> <laughs> the video quickly went viral, drawing widespread attention, but it also caused trouble between Jamie and the elites. Jamie claimed that he recorded and documented these events in the video. The revelations in the video have left people both captivated and concerned about what might have been happening behind the scenes at these events, but one person directed this revelation towards Diddy. He wrote, Diddy's S has been in question for a long time. It's gotta be true if it's been a question for this long, and people who've been around him have these stories. According to Jamie Foxx, these gatherings were anything but your typical soirees. They allegedly held a specific and rather unsettling purpose. It's been said that Hollywood elites meticulously arranged these events with a clear agenda, to manipulate artists who stood their ground against their sway or rejected their demands. The elites, it is claimed, would entice these artists into attending these gatherings, using them as a way to exercise their influence and establish control over them. The reality of it is that you are clearing up rooms that have just had sex parties, orgies, prostitutes, coke residue on the tables the next day. Moreover, social media influencer, entrepreneur, winemaker, and author Josh Ostrovsky allegedly shared a real horror encounter with Diddy and his friends. Josh lives in the United States. The Fat Jew is the name by which he is better recognized on social media. A lot of people felt one way and a lot of people felt the other way. I sort of got kind of placed into the middle, it was like the face of the issue, and I was, I was like, you know, the internet is for yelling and screaming. Josh basically talked about how he apparently faced a backlash when he exposed Diddy for dirty actions. Well, it was also natural for the netizens to criticize Josh because we all know how Diddy has always kept his angelic image among the public. It all started when Josh attended a party that was held on Star Island in Miami, which is also the location of P. Diddy's private mansion. He was there alongside a well-known house producer who was serving as the party's DJ. And what could he have possibly seen there? Basically me and like beautiful like ethnic models, mm -hmm. like, just beautiful women who I obviously had no interest in. Only beautiful women? But if there were only beautiful models there, then there should be nothing wrong with the party. You know, it's all like, you know, my man is telling me that like, you know, every third person is some executive, mm -hmm. you know, got behind the scenes guys who I don't recognize. Very high end. And okay. there's no joke, there's maybe a hundred people. There is something suspicious where Josh might have stumbled because he might have been feared of being recorded wrongfully. And to think of it, it is also very suspicious how a party can only have women with no men. A room, it doesn't have a bathroom in it. Mm -hmm. Whatever. Um, every room should have a bathroom in it. That makes sense. First if of all, if you're in this dungeon, room should yeah, have, right. every house should so have So I open yeah. a door, and in that room, there are a bunch of men. And here, two things might have sounded fishy to him. One, no bathrooms in the rooms, and men in the rooms. And this is not it. 
they were all lying around in a very weird manner. And they're all kind of like very like Romanesque, like laying about and, you know, kind of like very like kind of leaning on each other. Not really spooning, but like conversationally spooning. Well, you might know if two people lie like they are spooning, they must be a couple. But two men spooning and seeming to be romantically involved is somewhat very weird. Yes, uh, right, hang exactly. Yeah, or, like a, or like a fat group of women like laid on her side. Yeah, it you would know. almost be the prelude to a Yes. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Oh, oh, my God. Okay. Oh my God. That whole scenario could have been enough for Josh to clear all doubts that Diddy put on a show to invite beautiful women so that no one could find what was actually happening behind that pool packed with women. But Josh did not sit back silently and even disclosed, apparently, that Diddy's after parties and parties are no less than anxiety because when you leave those parties, the scenes haunt you for your life. He said, quote, pretty much everything. I've got a plethora of problems. Aren't we all at this point suffering from raging anxiety? The experiences we do are what people wish they could do, like riding around in a convertible with a llama in New York. So it's like the entertainment industry is this massive puzzle, way more intricate than what we witness on our screens. Emerging artists have to wade through a whole heap of experiences thanks to their mentors who have already surfed those crazy waves. It's like mentorship is the ultimate anger management therapy, or maybe something entirely different. But one thing's for sure, this industry is like a giant knot that no one can seem to unravel.